Welcome to Physical Chemistry 1 Laboratory. I am Dr. Min Su Lim, and I will show you how to carry out the lab in the experimental and theoretical aspects. You will do a two-week-long experiment titled Intrinsic Viscosity. I want you to follow my instruction very thoroughly, slide by slide. After you complete this online pre-lab lecture, you should take an online quiz that is posted in detail. You may watch this video as many times as you want, but you have only one chance to take the quiz. In this lab, you will determine the intrinsic viscosities of uncleaved and cleaved polyvinyl alcohol solutions or PVOH solutions. They will lead you to determine the molar masses of the uncleaved and cleaved PVOH using Flurry and Lutner's equation. Finally, you will be able to calculate the frequency of occurrence of head-to-head -head abnormal linkages in a single strand of a PVOH molecule. Polymer is a large molecule or macromolecule that is composed of many repeated subunits. The subunits are called monomers. The physical properties of a polymer are influenced by chain length, degree of chain branching, molar mass, and so on. However, the physical properties are not easily specified simply by the molecular formula of the polymer because the chain length or molar mass of the polymer is not uniform in most cases. So, it is important to understand the distribution of molar masses of a polymer. A monodispersed polymer is the one that has a single molar mass. Counts versus molar mass plot for a monodispersed polymer exhibits a very sharp peak almost a single vertical line at its molar mass, implying that the polymer has uniform molar mass. On the contrary, a polydispersed polymer is the one that has a wide distribution of molar masses and has non-uniform molar masses. Polyvinyl alcohol, or PVOH, is unusually soluble in water and this makes PVOH commercially important as a thickener and a foaming agent in detergents. In this lab, you will prepare polyvinyl alcohol solutions and determine the molar masses of uncleaved and cleaved PVOH molecules. This is the structure of polyvinyl alcohol. It has a long arcane backbone chain branched with hydroxyl groups. The next three slides illustrate the reaction mechanism and kinetics of the production of polyvinyl alcohol. A free radical is simply a molecule with an unpaired electron. A free radical tends to gain an additional electron in order to form an electron pair. As a result, a free radical becomes highly reactive and breaks a bond of another molecule by stealing an electron. The monomer for this polymerization is vinyl acetate. The carbon with a branch of acetate is called head, and the carbon without a branch is called tail. A reactive radical initiator attacks a monomer. It grabs one of the electrons from the double bond of the monomer and leaves an unpaired electron to appear as a new active center at the end of the chain. This elongated free radical can attack either end of another monomer. If it attacks tail side of the monomer, then it would form a head-to-tail linkage. On the contrary, if it attacks head side of the monomer, then it would form a head-to-head -head linkage. Since a head-to-tail linkage is less sterically hindered, it would be formed more likely, while a head-to-head -head linkage would be formed less likely. Polymerization process will be terminated by an inhibitor. 
the single electron of the inhibitor radical would be paired favorably with an electron of the polymeric free radical. The following methanolysis replaces acetate groups with hydroxyl groups to produce polyvinyl alcohol. The polyvinyl alcohol has mostly head-to-tail normal linkages with a few head-to-head -head abnormal linkages depending on the conditions for the polymerization of the vinyl acetate precursor. This example structure of polyvinyl alcohol consists of four monomers. It has two normal linkages at both ends and one abnormal linkage in the middle of the structure. This slide is about the kinetics for the formation of polyvinyl alcohol in the perspective of normal and abnormal growth. A polymeric free radical binds to a monomer mainly by a normal linkage or head-to-tail linkage due to the less steric hindrance, which is caused by adjacent side branches. It is called normal growth or alpha growth. The rate constant for the normal growth is denoted by K-alpha. In some cases, a free radical can bind to a monomer by an abnormal linkage or head-to-head -head linkage, but it occurs rarely due to the presence of steric hindrance. It is called abnormal growth or beta growth. The rate constant for the abnormal growth is denoted by k beta. Now, the question is, what is the fraction of the beta growth with respect to the alpha growth? The fraction f is described as k beta over k alpha. Savant Arrhenius proposed a formula indicating that reaction rate depends on temperature and activation energy. It is called Arrhenius equation. That is, rate constant k equals a times e to the negative ea over rt. k is the rate constant a is the pre-exponential factor, Ea is the activation energy, R is gas constant, and T is temperature. The Arrhenius equation can be applied to the fraction F, and it will be like this. You may rewrite it as A beta over A alpha times E to the negative activation energy of beta growth minus activation energy of alpha growth divided by rt. A beta over A alpha can be combined to S, which is called steric factor, and it deals with the orientation of two reactants. Activation energy difference Ea beta minus Ea alpha is now replaced by delta Ea. Fraction F is now described with respect to the activation energy difference between alpha and beta growth. That is, F equals S times E to the negative delta Ea divided by RT. What does this equation illustrate? It shows as delta Ea increases, F becomes smaller, and consequently, fewer abnormal linkages are formed. Check this energy diagram. The vertical axis represents energy and horizontal axis represents reaction pathways. The saddle point in the middle represents the energy states of two reactant molecules before the reaction takes place. The reactants have two available reaction pathways. They may choose the path with smaller activation energy barrier, Ea alpha, leading to head-to-tail normal growth. In certain circumstances, they may choose the path with greater activation energy barrier, Ea beta, leading to head-to-head -head abnormal growth. Please take note that the final energy of normal growth is smaller than the energy of abnormal growth indicating that head-to-tail linkage produced by normal growth is thermodynamically more stable. 
The equation along with this energy diagram shows that fraction F is substantially dependent on the activation energy difference between the two growths. That is, as delta Ea increases, F becomes smaller. Now, it is obvious that head-to-head -head linkages are kinetically unfavorable and thermodynamically unstable. Polyvinyl alcohol contains small number of head-to-head -head linkages as shown in this structure. KiO4 is a good oxidizing agent and it will be used as a cleaving agent. It will selectively cleave the PVOH molecule at the head-to-head -head linkages. It is no doubt that the molar mass of uncleaved PVOH is greater than the molar mass of cleaved PVOH. And the viscosity of uncleaved PVOH solution is greater than the viscosity of cleaved PVOH solution, as long as the concentrations of both solutions are the same. Viscosity is defined as the resistance to flow and it is directly proportional to the density of the fluid or the concentration of the fluid. It is also directly proportional to flow time. So, an equation of viscosity can be written as viscosity eta equals proportionality constant B times density of fluid rho times flow time t. The proportionality constant B is called apparatus constant and it may be different from viscosimeter to viscosimeter. So you have to determine the apparatus constant first before you use a viscosimeter. Now I will show you how to determine the apparatus constant B. You will use water as a reference liquid to determine B. The equation above can be rewritten with respect to the apparatus constant B. That is, B equals the viscosity of water divided by the density of water times the flow time of water. The viscosity and density of water at 23 Celsius, 25 Celsius, and 27 Celsius can be found in the lab textbook, and the values are tabulated here. Please take note that the unit of viscosity is centipoise, that is 0 0.01 poise. Poise corresponds to grams per centimeter per second. Since the viscosity and density of fluid depend on temperature, you should determine the viscosity and density of water at the temperature of measurements. Please use a spreadsheet software such as Microsoft Excel and plot the values in the table like the viscosity of water with respect to temperature and the density of water with respect to temperature. Find the equation for the best fit line from each graph. Plug the actual temperature of water into the equation and determine the viscosity and density of water. Since you have determined the viscosity and density of water, the only one left is flow time. I will show you in the next slide how to measure the flow time of water with a viscosimeter. Clean the viscosimeter with acetone and distilled water. Install a viscosimeter vertically in a water bath as shown on the right. Pipette water into the viscosimeter. Use a pipette bulb and draw water up to a point well above the upper visual mark. Release the suction and measure the flow time between the upper and the lower marks with a stopwatch. Obtain two or more additional runs. Three runs should agree within about 1%. Use the average flow time of water to determine B. Since you have determined the viscosity and density of water and measured flow time of water, now you are ready to determine 
the apparatus constant B using this equation. This slide shows the step-by-step -step procedure to prepare uncleaved and cleaved PVOH solutions. The first step is to grind 4 grams of dry polyvinyl alcohol to fine powder using a mortar and pestle. This step may take 1 hour and a half or even longer, and it requires strong force to grind the polymer. So, group members should take turns to grind it. The next step is to dissolve the PVOH powder by adding it slowly in 200 milliliters of hot water. Make sure that the water does not boil. Stir gently with a magnetic stove bar to avoid the formation of bubbles. When all of the polymer has dissolved, let the solution cool and transfer it carefully into a 250 ml volumetric flask. Avoid foaming as much as possible by letting the solution run down the side of the flask. Make the solution up to the mark with distilled water and mix by slowly inverting the solution a few times. This is the stock solution of uncleaved PVOH and the concentration of it is 1.6 grams per deciliter. It may take entire 3 hours this far. The next step is to transfer 50 ml of stock solution into a 100 ml volumetric flask. Add distilled water up to the mark and mix by slowly inverting the solution a few times. The concentration of the new solution is the half of the concentration of stock solution, which is 0.8 grams per deciliter. The next step is to transfer 50 ml of this solution into another 100 ml volumetric flask. Add distilled water up to the mark and mix by slowly inverting the solution a few times. The concentration of this solution is 0.4 grams per deciliter. Now, you have two uncleaved PVOH solutions. The one is 100 ml solution of 0.4 grams per deciliter, and the other one is the remaining 50 ml solution of 0.8 grams per deciliter. Now, I will show you how to prepare cleaved PVOH solution. Transfer 50 ml of stock solution into a beaker and add 0.25 grams of cleaving agent, which is potassium peridate, KiO4. Put the beaker on a heating plate and heat the solution with stirring gently at 70 Celsius for 15 minutes and cool it to room temperature. The remaining steps are pretty much the same with the previous procedure for diluting uncleaved PVOH solution. Transfer entire solution into a 100 ml volumetric flask. Rinse the beaker with small amount of distilled water and put the rinse into the volumetric flask. This is to minimize the loss of PVOH. Add distilled water up to the mark and mix by slowly inverting the solution a few times. The concentration of the solution is 0.8 grams per deciliter. The next step is to transfer 50 ml of this solution into another 100 ml volumetric flask. Add distilled water up to the mark and mix by slowly inverting the solution a few times. The concentration of the new solution is 0.4 grams per deciliter. Now, you have two cleaved PVOH solutions. The one is 100 ml solution of 0.4 grams per deciliter, and the other one is the remaining 50 ml solution of 0.8 grams per deciliter. Measuring the flow time of PVOH solutions is pretty much the same procedure 
of measuring the flow time of water. Clean the viscosimeter with acetone and distilled water. Install a viscosimeter vertically in a water bath as shown on the right. Pipette a PVOH solution into the viscosimeter. Use a pipette bulb and draw the solution up to a point well above the upper visual mark. Release the suction and measure the flow time between the upper and the lower marks with a stopwatch. Obtain two or more additional runs. Three runs should agree within about 1%. Use the average flow time of solution to determine the viscosity of the solution. Please don't forget to rinse the viscosimeter three to five times thoroughly with acetone and water after all lab work is completed. If not, residual PVOH solution will be dried inside a narrow glass tube which will cause clogging of the tube. Now you are ready to determine the viscosity of solutions using this equation. Please use the density of water for the density of each solution. Determine and report the viscosity of four PVOH solutions, two uncleaved PVOH solutions, and two cleaved PVOH solutions. Specific viscosity is defined as the ratio of the viscosity of solution to the viscosity of solvent minus 1. Determine the specific viscosity of the four PVOH solutions. Please keep in mind that the specific viscosity is unitless. Since the viscosity of solution is greater than the viscosity of solvent, the ratio eta over eta naught is greater than 1. Consequently, specific viscosity should be positive. Intrinsic viscosity is defined as the ratio of the specific viscosity to the weight concentration of solute in the limit of zero concentration, and it is also expressed mathematically as limit of specific viscosity of solution over concentration as concentration approaches zero. Intrinsic viscosity is also expressed mathematically as limit of 1 over C times log of eta over eta naught as concentration approaches zero. Now, I will show you how to determine graphically the intrinsic viscosity of uncleaved and cleaved PVOH solutions. For your convenience, I want you to construct a data table as shown here. Fill the table with experimentally determined flow time of four PVOH solutions and mathematically calculated values of the four solutions. Take note that the values that are needed for the determination of intrinsic viscosity are included in the last two columns. Now you are ready to plot them. Construct two plots for the uncleaved PVOH solutions. The first plot is eta SP over C with respect to concentration. There will be two data points on the graph. One data point for the 0.4 grams per deciliter solution and another one for the 0.8 grams per deciliter solution. Connect these two points and find the trend line equation for this line using Microsoft Excel. The y-intercept is the intrinsic viscosity. It is the same with B in the equation. The second plot is 1 over C times log of eta over eta naught with respect to concentration. There will be also two data points on the graph. Connect these two points and find the trend line equation for this line using Microsoft Excel. The y-intercept is the intrinsic viscosity. 
it is the same with B prime in the equation. The two intrinsic viscosities determined by these two graphical methods should match well. That is, B and B prime should be almost the same. Calculate the average value of B and B prime and record it as the intrinsic viscosity of the uncleaved PVOH solution. I want you to repeat the same process for the cleaved PVOH solutions. Keep in mind that you should report two intrinsic viscosities, one for the uncleaved PVOH solutions and another one for the cleaved PVOH solutions. You should also include four graphs, two for the uncleaved PVOH solutions and another two for the cleaved PVOH solutions. Flory and Lutner published their work to the Journal of Polymer Science in 1948 and proposed how to determine the molar masses of uncleaved and cleaved polyvinyl alcohol and the occurrence of head-to-head -head linkages. In their proposal, intrinsic viscosity equals 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth mv to the power of 0 0.76. mv is defined as viscosity averaged molar mass. It is the molar mass of polymer to be determined using intrinsic viscosity. The equation can be written with respect to the viscosity averaged molar mass, mv, and it is mv equals 7.6 times 10 to the fourth times intrinsic viscosity to the power of 1.32. Now, you are able to calculate mv, which is the molar mass of uncleaved PVOH, and mv prime, which is the molar mass of cleaved PVOH. The frequency of occurrence of head-to-head -head linkages, or delta, equals 83 times the reciprocal of the molar mass of cleaved PVOH minus the reciprocal of the molar mass of uncleaved PVOH. Remember that MV prime is less than MV. Consequently, the reciprocal of MV prime is greater than the reciprocal of mv. It implies that delta should be positive. Now, how can you interpret the delta? Suppose the delta turned out to be 0 0.00038 or 38 times 10 to the power of negative 5. It implies that 38 abnormal linkages are present in a single strand of PVOH that consists of 100,000 monomers. I want you to include at least the following items in your lab report. Number one, graphically determine the viscosity and density of water and the apparatus constant of the viscosimeter. Number two, a completed data table is shown below. Take note that three additional columns for intrinsic viscosity, viscosity averaged molar mass, and delta are included in the table from the previous slide. Number three, include your interpretation of delta. Now, please log in to the 12 and take the online quiz titled Intrinsic Viscosity.